page 11 of math induction. So um, first, for number 3C, uh, we want to restate the, um, the conjecture, um, which is this. Okay. Um, okay. So the first uh, base case would be n equals 1. So we put n equals 1 here. And then we're going to substitute in n equals 1, and we'll get z of 1 conjugate equals z conjugate of 1. So z of 1, z to the 1 is just z. So the left side is z conjugate. z conjugate to the 1 is just z conjugate. So the right side becomes um, just z conjugate. So the right hand, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So we're done. Therefore, P1 is true. If PK of true, if PK true is true, then let's see. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to substitute all the n's for k's. ZK conjugate is equal to Z conjugate to the k power. And we're going to assume that's true. Um, now for the rest, we're going to put k plus 1 in there on the left side of these. So we're going to have z k plus 1 conjugate. And that is just equal to z to the k times z to the first conjugate. And uh, we're going to use, like on the last page, remember that there is a rule which says that if you have um, two complex numbers multiplied together, and conjugated, it's equal to each one conjugated separately and multiplied together. So let's use that, and we're going to assume that this is one complex number, and this is another complex number, even though this is actually a bunch of complex numbers multiplied together. A bunch of complex numbers multiplied together is the same thing as, or they, it is also a conjugate uh, complex number. So we're going to rewrite it as um, z to the k conjugate times z to the first conjugate, which is just z to the conjugate. Now remember, a mission is always to try to use the um, p to the k statement in, uh, in our, um, z, our k plus 1 statement. And we can see that actually we have the left side of the p to the k statement here. So let's substitute in there. We're going to end up with z conjugate to the k times z conjugate, which is, uh, if you have z the conjugate to the k power times z the conjugate to the first power, that's equal to z conjugate to the k plus 1th power. And so now we have um, this and this, which is the k plus 1th version of that. So we've proven it. So z is thus, z k plus 1 conjugate is equal to uh, z conjugate to the k plus 1 if z k conjugate is equal to z conjugate to the k. Okay, so since p1 is true and p k plus 1 is true whenever p k is true, then p of n is true for uh, n uh, is a positive integer. Okay, 18j. Okay, so we've now finished uh, the chapter on math induction, but uh, in other chapters there were certain problems which I skipped over uh, that required math induction. Now we're going to revisit those problems. So in chapter 18, um, there was this problem, which is not exactly a math induction problem, but it kind of leads to the next one. So we have a function, and this is the function here. And you can see that we can actually kind of do math induction um, increments with the integer n. We could do that with um, derivatives too. Okay, so let's start with this function, e to the ax times x plus 1, where a is a real number. And we are going to show that the first derivative is equal to this. That's pretty easy, right? We're just going to take the derivative of this. Remember, a is just a number. So we're going to use the product rule on this. So first we leave the first um, 
factor untouched, and then we take the derivative of the second factor, the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, then we uh, write, uh, or then we uh, take the derivative of the exponential, so it would be a e to the ax, and uh, then we multiply that times the second factor untouched. So then we end up with e to the ax times, and we could factor out e to the ax, and we would end up with uh, a, like the second um, factor would be, you would have be left with a x plus 1, and from the first factor you did just have 1. Okay? So, and that matches exactly with a. What about b? b asks us to find the second derivative of this. So, again, we're going to use product rule. And so first we can leave the first factor untouched, and then we can take the derivative of the second factor. And uh, basically, the second uh, deriv or the, the derivative of the second factor would just be a, because the derivative of ax is a. And then uh, we're going to take the derivative of the first factor, e to the ax, and then we'll multiply that times the second factor untouched. Okay, so there's the second factor the way it was above. And uh, now let's try to simplify this. Um, so it looks like they're going to factor out a e to the a x out of everything. So let's do that. a e to the a x times, and here we just be left with 1, right? Uh, here we'll be left with this, a x plus 1 plus 1. And so now we can see that if we rearrange the second factor, we'll have a x plus 1 plus 2. So we got the what we should get on b. Last of all, for, for C, uh, now we're going to find the uh, kth derivative and the k plus 1th derivative of these expressions. So, just like in um, math induction, we're going to assume that this first one is true, and then we're going to figure out what the k plus 1th uh, derivative is. So, uh, the first derivative is that, or the kth derivative is that, and let's take the derivative of of, of that. So first we're going to take the derivative of the uh, first factor, which would be um, a k minus 1, which is just a number, uh, times a e to the a x, and then we leave the inside of the second factor as is. And then we do, we're doing product rule, so now the first factor we leave untouched. So e to the ax. And now we take the derivative of the second factor, which would be the derivative of ax is a. And everything else would just the derivative is 0. So we can see that here, this would become a to the k, e to the ax. And this would be a to the k, e to the ax, and the inside here would be a x plus 1 plus k. Now we can factor a to the k, e to the ax out of everything, and then we end up with a e to the ax, a x plus 1 plus k plus 1. There's a 1 remaining from this. And now we could... Um, just group the k plus 1, and then we have exactly what we wanted to have, okay? So this is kind of like a, um, we're doing algebraic manipulation that would be required for a math induction proof, but it's not exactly a math induction proof.